Welcome to Trade the NBA.com. This is John. This report is for the 23rd of May, and there it was. We had that uh, well easy marker. The 50% was always the um, critical point, and it began to make its rise. Oops, it's moving that. It went from uh, 2844 to 5150, which became the new threshold, and so it wasn't hard when that uh, level started to break, and we could see clearly from a daily, and it showed up even easier on the uh, intraday charts, uh, the break of cyan to green. That rejection always becomes pivotal. At the same time, the red rolling over, and that was critical. We were talking about that it had to move above um, the negative 7.5 in order to continue. Uh, moving uh, forward with the rally, we didn't get a huge dip in the um, steel here to get below cyan, so it wasn't a significant, uh, you know, short configuration in that setup. So we were right at the stasis point where we were just kind of stabilizing, but got no help from the shakeout as far as an improved histogram, and we saw that uh, was continuing from the other day, and sure enough, uh, it's already continued to bleed through, so that failure to uh, break into above zero, and this is not unexpected too, because we talked about how when you get this kind of deep fall off, you'll get a brief rise, um, and then it usually peter out, come back, and resurface, and then the key is the next turnaround of um, the red DOC, but in that case, we would be looking for orange to make a nosedive to come underneath uh, like it did here uh, to generate any kind of pop signal. We knew that this was uh, the divergence because the NASDAQ was much weaker and had maintained its weakness, had never even got close to meeting uh, the cyan at this level and rolled over much earlier. Um, and that, well, we knew that was the problem uh, aspect overall for the broader market in general. Combine that with the euro unable to uh, make its move. Uh, the rejection of uh, orange not dipping below when it had the slight bullish crossover and still no green above red. And that's exactly what we're getting is that return back to the zero. And again, I was talking about uh, my expectation was that we would break this low and uh, make a lower range with the euro, uh, especially with um, EU elections right around the corner. Uh, that slide could become participant. Uh, well, could increase in its volatility simply because of uh, the uncertainty factor unless um, powers that be maintain their ability you also have the problems with um, England and whether or not it's going to uh, <laughs> end up with a new prime minister and that so even though it's uh, based on the pound it still has an impact on the euro and whether or not uh, Brit exits will, you know, continue to muddle things for quite some time. And, uh, of course, then there's obviously the political issues uh, in America. Uh, obviously, the inability for any legislation for infrastructure, and that means no new uh, stimulus, which is problematic for some businesses, not every one of them, but uh, it certainly complicates uh, the effectiveness of government going forward. So I think that's also puts a little downside pressure. So we may even see uh, gold potentially respond a little bit. We've had some short-term interest right here with the rising steel, but not significant enough to uh, create a boost. So uh, not a global threat, so to speak, in the sense that people feel like they need to hedge with the commodities yet. So it was very nice. So uh, we had that early short signal. Uh, that produced the low range. Uh, would have been looking for the 2845 when it came down here and didn't quite get there before producing a buy, which uh, was a little disappointed by <laughs> because I kind of wanted it to go all the way down to that uh, uh, to make it cover, but you know, it happened a little higher and that's fine. Uh, and then it produced additional buy signals as it came to the peak. Produced lovely DLC spread. That one should have been marked as well, which is right here. And love it because anytime you get this rollover of the red DOC right at that zero point, you know you uh, looking at something positive. And then the best part of this one was the fact that steel comes up above and then crosses below at the same time you have that huge rejection split right there. It bounced around for a while, producing the same thing, then made the low. Produced another little tiny buy, but again, this sort of like what you would call, you know, a version of a intraday triple top kind of effect. But then it produced again um, this inability to get that red uh, DOC above zero, 
and then every time you get those DOCs. Now this one was a little more concerning for me because as we crossed over with the steel, I was like, okay, uh, the potential is that 100% uh, if it continued, but it rejected lower, and that meant another opportunity to um, add to the short, and sure enough, that's led to this beautiful, just, uh, well, this just climb is just uh, very effective. Um, and we did take out the 2845, in fact, also the 2839, and still moving lower within this. Uh, we're just in a continuation zone again with that steel all the way up. Only when it peaks up uh, above the plus 13.5 do I get uh, concerned that there could be some kind of rally, but we're below the 23%, so there isn't anything to do until that's crossed over, so just increasing that volatility again. We knew that when we had that squeeze that there was going to be a little bit of a spread and uh, in this case the uh, politics of the world sort of uh, helped uh, convince people that uh, new buying wasn't in their interest at this particular point and nice effective drop. 2830 is our next level that we're looking at and we're going to reach that with that much trouble. I don't think that's uh, even a question. Um, and we'll go from there. So all good stuff. As always, though, trade well, and uh, I will put up anything that's uh, unique on the uh, Skype chat. Talk to you later.